Hey guys and welcome to Minimalistic. So if you saw my last build log, you probably noticed that I changed my liquid CPU cooler for a smaller air cooler. In fact, I had a Corsair H60, which is a 120 single fan liquid CPU cooler, and I installed a Cryorig C7 air cooler instead. But why exactly? Well, I'm looking to downsize my rig in a somewhat near future. I'm aiming at the Sentry PC case, the Luke, or even the Dan A4 as compelling options. I really like these tiny form factor PC cases, and one constraint they almost all have is to use a cooler that is not much taller than the Intel stock cooler. So that's the first step in that direction, and one of the most important, I guess, as it will determine if going smaller will lead to heat issues. That category of CPU coolers is quite limited, featuring mainly the Noctua L9 and the Cryorig C7 as some of the most popular choices. While the Noctua seemed pretty good, the Cryorig had a higher TDP rating, which made it a better fit for my i7. And it makes sense as its fan and the overall size of its thin area are a bit larger than the ones found on the Noctua unit. As a Canadian, Cryorig products were not available from any retailer until very recently, where all of their products appeared on Amazon Canada. And that is how I went with this model. I'm currently using it with an i7-4790K at stock speeds, and we'll see if this tiny cooler is enough. So first of all, yes, I have an unlocked CPU at stock speeds. And I can already see you in the comments down below telling me how dumb I am for not overclocking my CPU. Well, the answer is simple, I don't need it. I play all my games at 4K with a GTX 1070 and the real bottleneck is definitely my GPU. My CPU never maxes out so I really don't see the point of overclocking and potentially making it run hotter or shortening its lifespan. So now that's out of the way, let's check out the cooler. So in the box you get the cooler itself, the mounting hardware, some thermal compound, a tool and the brackets needed to support multiple sockets. For the price this cooler costs, I think you get a decent amount of accessories with it. The cooler looks really good, and will match my black and white team, so that's a plus. It uses a 92mm fan instead of the 121 I had on my liquid cooler, and that should make a difference in performance and sound. Also, I like the fact that the fan cable is braided with a black material. It looks great. The whole thing isn't that big, but it's still quite bigger than an Intel stock cooler in comparison. The installing process is pretty straightforward, until I realized that I should have installed these little washers instead of the bracket as I have a mini ITX motherboard. That wasn't in the included instructions, so that's why I realized it afterward. Still, it seems to fit decently, so I left it that way. So as I said, I used an i7-4790K at 4GHz for all my tests. This particular CPU uses 88 watts on average at its base frequency. As you probably guessed, the H60 is way better at dissipating heat than the new smaller Cryorig C7. It's not the same size and not the same price either. I used ADA64 as a synthetic benchmark to compare both coolers with a full load on the CPU. That benchmark gives you a worst case scenario as it's pretty rare that you'll have all 8 threads on your i7 under a full load. However, if you plan on using your computer for rendering purposes, it can be a reasonable stress test to try. On the other hand, gaming will rarely put your CPU under a comparable load, but I'll go over that later. In fact, I was able to run ADA64 for 30 minutes using the H60 with the fan speed about halfway while still keeping the i7 well under 80 degrees on all cores. Again, boosting up the fan a bit would have dropped down the max temperature much more, if it's a concern to you, but I was considering the sound aspect as well here. Also, during the whole 30 minutes I ran the test, the CPU never throttled, keeping its turbo boost frequency of 4.2 GHz. Now, running the same benchmark on the cryo rig didn't give as good results. Within minutes, some of the cores went over 90 degrees with the fan going full speed. It wasn't throttling yet, but I wasn't comfortable about letting it go even hotter, so I stopped the benchmark after a few minutes. Clearly, this Cryorig C7 cooler is not able to dissipate the heat of a stock i7 under a full load. Forget about overclocking. I also did a little sound test. You can take a look at the setup I used here for both coolers. It's just to give an idea on how both sounded, with the H60's fan going mid-speed and the Cryorig on full speed.
So yeah, again, apart from giving way better results, the H60 was much more quiet as it was able to keep the fan speed lower. Now that gives an idea on a synthetic load, let's see how both perform while gaming. I played a bit of Doom at 4K using high settings and here's what I got. The Corsair did keep the CPU at lower temps, but the Cryo Rig was still performing decently and the fan wasn't at full speed either. The H60 was able to keep my CPU at 40 degrees on average, hitting a max of 52 degrees and the cryo rig kept the CPU on average at 59 hitting a max of 66 degrees. That's a considerable difference, but both are totally safe temperatures. Sure, the Corsair did better, but the Cryo Rig wasn't failing either. And that leads me to my conclusion. In the end, I think that the Cryo Rig C7 is a bit too small for a high wattage CPU like my unlocked i7, even on stock speeds. While it was okay for gaming, doing any intense workloads for a long period of time is almost impossible using that combination without throttling. So my recommendations would be to either go for a bigger cooler, like I had before, or simply go for a lower wattage CPU, like a locked i5, if it's enough for the workload you're planning on doing. For my part, I'm going to keep the C7 installed, as I pretty much only game and browse the web using my PC, but I'll keep the H60 near if that ever changes. As for my plans on downsizing, I will probably completely change my CPU and motherboard someday, and going for a CPU that draws less power will probably be the route that I'll go for if I want to keep on using that cooler. So, hope this video helped. If you have any questions about this specific cooler or about the build I'm aiming for in the future, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll be more than happy to read it. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure you like this video if you did and don't forget to subscribe for more similar content.